Tis the season for survival games. If you've been following my channel for a while now, you'll know that I love some survival games. Most of them suck, some of them are cheap imitations, there's a couple of diamonds in the rough and some of them aren't quite as good as I remember. I played a lot of DayZ back in the day as well as newer survival games like Ark, H1Z1 Rust, you name it, I've probably tried it. Well, there's a new game on the block that we can get stuck into next year called Escape from Tarkov. On first impressions, it looks very promising. It's not your typical survival game and has a lot of depth to it. The game is an interesting mix of FPS, RPG and MMO really all brought together in one package. That's a lot of different elements to get right though. When I saw the footage of the actual FPS element of the game, it seemed like a blend of Squad, The Division and Stalker. Also, after doing some research, it turns out that some of the developers actually worked on the Stalker games, so there's definitely some similarities in certain areas there. I'm sure most of you will remember Stalker, but if you don't, it was a game set in Russia after the aftermath of Chernobyl, and this game has a similar sort of feel to it. Like DayZ, this game is heavily leaning towards simulation rather than casual shooter. We're talking full weapon customization, real world gun ballistics, a full procedural effects system, as well as absolute control over player movements. Your weapons will overheat as well as jam, and your weapon unlocks will be based on skills learnt by your character. In terms of the story, it's a bit bleak. You'll find yourself in a modern Russian city called Tarkov that's sunk into anarchy, and you must solve its mysteries to get out alive. What's more is that there is a conflict going on between two private military companies, which will be your typical MMO factions. Your goal being to side with one of those factions and set out to learn the secrets of Tarkov while battling your enemy and working out exactly why Tarkov is currently sealed off from the rest of the world. Oh, and you've got to escape, of course. Sounds pretty interesting, right? In terms of the multiplayer, there will be raids and quests, as well as a story element which you would expect from a typical MMO. As well as that, you'll be able to join free roam servers, and players can either band together or go solo to complete quests and take part in both PvP and PvE combat. And as you would expect from an MMO, you'll have access to unique skills and a character progression system. You can upgrade or improve around 150 skills, which are separated into four types that are physical, combat, practical, and cognitive. In fact, the developers have said that the character development will be similar to the Elder Scrolls system if you've played any of those games. They've also explained how the raids will work. These are going to be big scenarios that you have to beat based around certain areas like downtown, suburbs, or a chemical plant, for example. By doing the raid, you'll gain both experience and also loot at the same time, but be careful because if you die in the raid, you're going to lose everything that you took in with you and also everything that you picked up whilst you were in there. You won't, however, lose anything that you've put in your secret cache locations. The playable space of the raids will be up to 8 square kilometres and in that space you'll almost certainly come across other players and remember they don't have to be friendly to you just like you don't have to be friendly with them. On top of that you can expect to encounter weather changes which judging by the HUD could affect you in terms of temperature and other ways. There's also a free roam mode which will be twice as big at 16 square kilometres. Worryingly though they do say that the larger areas are only limited to 64 players. In my opinion, that's not really that many for that size of a level, but there is something to be said for rare player encounters in games such as DayZ because it makes them a little bit more special. The raid system in the game does sound reasonably similar to the PvP system adopted by The Division, and you could say that they're similar in that respect, but design-wise they are clearly very different games. This game will also have an offline element in which you can do things like healing, trading, improving your weapons, managing your loot and researching, and also spying, but I'm not quite sure what that means. Again, researching could be a lot of different things, but it does sound intriguing. There aren't that many details available on the game yet. As well as this offline element, the game will have an economy that is controlled by AI, but influenced by the actual players. Players can barter for resources that they need, get involved in auctions and even open up their own businesses trading in resources. So if you want to be the Russian Dell boy with an AK-47 then this is the game you've been waiting for. What's more is the game will have a realism based damage model. Each body part will have a health bar so your left arm, right arm, right leg etc can all be damaged individually rather than just a generic health drop like we see in pretty much every other game. I imagine this will affect your movement quite drastically if you do hurt one of your legs for example, you're going to limp. 
As well as that, players can die in a lot of ways from dehydration to blood loss, poisoning or even an infection from a wound. Luckily, if you're a good scavenger, you'll find a lot of medical supplies to prevent this from splints and bandages to antibiotics. As with any game like this, the inventory system can really make or break it to a certain extent. It's fair to say that most of the survival games released so far have a pretty awful inventory and UI system. And of course, in a game like this where you'll spend a significant amount of time in your inventory, swapping things in and out as well as searching other players, it needs to be pretty good and at first glance, it actually looks like it is. For an alpha build, which is the footage you're seeing now, it's pretty polished in fact. You'll be able to check out your current equip gear as well as drag and drop scavenged items. It looks like each section of the inventory is modular as well, so you can move it around however you see fit. The health tab will show your health on each body part as well as hydration levels, exposure levels which would suggest that there are some toxic areas around the map or radiation that you'll need to look out for, that's very stalkerish, as well as a temperature reading so it's possible that low temperatures could be a factor from the changing weather. You may also find yourself picking up keys to lock doors or lock cases, a weapon case for example. Simply drag the key onto the case to open it up and a draggable window will appear with the contents of the case. Some bullets may be simply drag them onto your empty magazine to load it up and drag and drop that mag onto your gun to load it. What about modifying my weapon though? Well, that's all here as well by the looks of it. Right click your weapon and you can fully customise almost every part. You get a visual 3D weapon, a bit like the Crisis Weapon Hood, and here you can change things like the grip, the sight, the stock, the rail, the barrel. It's actually a really impressive amount of customisation, in fact all with a 3D visual representation. Based on the trailer as well, the gunplay doesn't look terrible. That's a big problem with a lot of these survival games. The gunplay always comes second and it just feels crap. However, looking at the footage that we've already got, it looks like it could actually be pretty good. Visually, it's a gorgeous game as well. I'm not exactly sure what engine it's running on, it might even be their own engine, but either way, it looks brilliant. The weapons and environment look very detailed and immersive, the lighting's great, the interiors and the buildings really stand out compared to other games of this type. Animations also look decent for such an early state, and picking up items as well as opening doors all have their own custom animations. But before we get overhyped, I think we need to err on the side of caution right now because of course what we've got to take into account is right now we've got absolutely no idea how big the playable area is and how much of these interiors will be duplicated or even if the game will be incredibly laggy on launch of course the developer is making these trailers and putting the gameplay footage out there but we don't know if they're running this in a live game or a very small instance of it. What we do know as I said is that the larger areas will be limited to 64 players so from this we can deduce that the playable area might actually not be that big. Overall, based on what's been shown so far and what they're talking about achieving with the game is pretty exciting, but it's also pretty ambitious to try and get everything right. There's a lot of elements here that could go wrong. And I can't help but feel it's going to be pretty buggy to start with. The developers claim that they're around 70% finished in terms of features and around 30% done in terms of content, so clearly there's still a very long way to go. Also, with no real track record of the studio to go on, it's a bit early at this stage to say if it's going to achieve everything that they want it to. Thankfully though, we won't have to wait long to find out because a closed beta is planned for early next year, which you can go and sign up for on the website. I've already signed up because I can't wait to get my hands on this thing and hopefully see how it plays and performs. Definitely put this on your watch list folks, it's looking pretty good. And that's all for today guys, let me know your thoughts on the game down in the comments below. Do you think this is going to be the one new survival game to rule them all or another early access flop? As always give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video, thumbs down if you didn't. I hope you all have a great Christmas and I'll see you in the next one.